Hello fellow Etsy sellers and marketers. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the most up-to-date, step-by-step process to both set up your Etsy ads and properly optimize for maximum profit. I'll also be including timestamps in the description section below as well in case you want to skip around because we'll be beginning more at a beginner level and becoming more advanced as the video progresses. And as a special bonus for this video, if this video gets 30 unique comments, one lucky winner will get full lifetime access to our top rated Etsy shop mastery course on Udemy. So be sure to drop a comment below for your chance to win. So before we dive in to one of my Etsy shops to show you how to set up and optimize Etsy advertising, first we need to understand what are Etsy ads because there's actually two types. So the first are called Etsy offsite ads. If you go to your Etsy shop on the left hand side, click on settings, click on offsite ads, there you have the opportunity to enroll in Etsy offsite ads or not, which I would recommend doing for every Etsy seller who has profit margin of at least 15%. Why? Because this is passive marketing. Etsy will basically show your listing and advertise it on places like Facebook, Google Shopping, and other platforms, and you only pay if you get a sale. And right now, it'll be 15% of the sale price. So if your profit margin is over 15% and you only pay Etsy whenever you get a sale, this is basically like printing money. So I'd highly recommend making sure that you are enrolled in offsite ads. So that's number one. And then number two are what are called Etsy search ads, which is what we're gonna be covering in depth in this video. And that is essentially where, as an Etsy seller, you have the opportunity to tell Etsy, hey, here's the total amount of money I'm willing to spend per day on ads, and then here are the specific products or listings that I'm willing to advertise with that budget. So basically those two things, Etsy will take your budget, take those listings, and will basically promote you at the top of search results for specific keywords, and Etsy will actually read your title and your tags to identify what keywords to show. So with Etsy ads, you cannot target specific keywords um, and you can't set bids for specific keywords like you can with other platforms like Amazon PPC, Google ads, Pinterest ads, and other PPC platforms. But Etsy still is a PPC or pay per click platform where you only pay Etsy whenever you get an actual click on your ad. So it's, you're not paying for sales, but you are paying per click. So you tell Etsy, here's the amount of money I'm willing to spend, here are my listings. Etsy will look at your listing to identify what keywords are relevant. They'll start taking your listing and promoting it or pushing it to the top of search results so more shoppers see it. A percentage of them are going to click and ultimately buy and whenever someone clicks, that's when you pay Etsy for each click and it varies usually on average between 20 cents to 50 cents per click though it definitely depends on the product and category. And the next thing that we need to know before running any Etsy ads is what is your goal? Is your goal to increase keyword ranking? Is it to get more sales in order to get more reviews to improve your conversion rate? Is it just to be as profitable as possible and just get a few more cheap sales um, every single month? You know, steal market share, there's a whole plethora of goals that you could have. So get really clear on what your goal is, which can be different from product to product and depending on your goal, that is going to change your optimization criteria, which we'll cover later, which is why we're discussing it now. So with your goal, right, whatever that is, then you need to understand what is your maximum CPA or cost per acquisition? What's the maximum amount of money you're willing to spend in order to make one sale based on your goal? If your goal is to really be aggressive, increase keyword ranking on Etsy, to get more reviews, then maybe you know, you're willing to be a little bit unprofitable in the beginning in order to be more profitable later. Maybe you already have an established Etsy shop and you have a lot of products, so you're gonna take your top selling products and just make sure that you can get some additional profitable sales every single month. It completely depends on your goals, but number one, what is your goal? And then number two, what is the maximum amount of money you're willing to spend per product, in order to know that, you should definitely know your individual product's profit margin as well. And with that being said, something interesting I've noticed about Etsy advertising is products that have higher profit margins tend to perform better with Etsy ads than those with lower margins, which sort of makes sense, right? Because if your product has a higher margin, you're able to spend more, and with each sale that you make, uh, you make a decent amount of margin. 
right? Where with lower margin products, I found they're really difficult to get profitable with Etsy ads, with the way Etsy ads are currently set up, which could change in the future. So with that, my general recommendation is when getting started with Etsy ads, which we'll cover obviously in a lot more detail here in just a second, is to look at your Etsy listing conversion rates and profit margins. So whatever products that you have that have the highest conversion rates and also have the highest profit margin, those are the best products to get started with Etsy advertising because you know your conversion rate is going to be better and you're going to be able to make a decent amount per sale and have a good amount to be able to spend on Etsy ads. And then once you start getting those ads profitable, bringing in some additional margin, then reinvest those profits back into maybe testing some more of your other products where a lot of Etsy sellers, they might turn on all their listings at once and it's kind of a mess and um, so certain products are doing really well, others are not. So what I recommend doing is being much more focused and targeted, but of course it depends on your goal, but start with those number one, higher profit margin and high converting products, either one, two, could be a few, depending on how big your shop is. Start there, um, get those in a good position, and then use the profit that you make from that to reinvest toward testing other products, if that makes sense. So I found that to be a little bit more sustainable and much easier if you're getting started to have you know fewer things to really focus on and get really good instead of getting overwhelmed and your budget going to all these different places. And with all this being said, let's go ahead and get to the tutorial. All right, so with that covered, we are now here in one of our test Etsy shop accounts. So once you log into your Etsy shop, here on the left-hand side, go to marketing, and then click on Etsy ads and you'll get here to the Etsy advertising dashboard. So the first thing you wanna do, whether you've set up your ads or not, is click on manage budget if Etsy doesn't automatically prompt you to this. So click here and as you see, there is a minimum daily budget that Etsy has and then a maximum. What I recommend doing in general is setting toward the maximum. Remember, this is the most you'd be willing to spend in a single day, but I have found that that's rarely the case. And I've talked to many Etsy sellers and this is the same with our own products is that for whatever reason, um, it's very rare that we actually even get to that amount. And hopefully if you're running ads profitably, which I'll show you how to do, then even if you spent up to that $500 or more amount per day, uh, then it'd be profitable. And another reason for setting your maximum budget on the higher end, and I'd recommend going all the way up to the top, is with this specific account actually, I originally had around a $1,000 maximum daily budget limit but I set it to around 500. And then later at some point I checked back in and my, my maximum budget that Etsy allowed was now 500 instead of 1000. So even if I wanted to increase more, I can't at least as of the moment um, because of that. So for whatever reason. So because of that kind of utilize as much as possible uh, of your maximum budget, set it higher. So you kind of maintain that. And then if you ever want to lower it, you can, but it's up to you. Uh, but again, here's kind of the minimum and maximum minimum for, I think every account is $1 a day currently. So that's kind of step one. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Next thing you wanna do is click on um, manage advertised listings. This is simply where you are going to select the listings you wanna advertise. It's that simple. Those are the two things that you have the most control over um, when setting up your Etsy ads. So as we see, we have a few different products here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is select, again, those products that I think will either have the highest conversion rate or the highest profit amount or ideally both because I found higher converting products and especially those products that have higher profit margins tend to perform way better with Etsy ads. So what I've done is out of these uh, products here, I've selected my top two um, highest margin products. And then once you've now selected, and as you can see, if you ever want to, you can on the right hand side, turn off or on any listing. So I can turn this, this one off right here, which I'm not gonna do because I don't wanna mess with it. Uh, but here, for example, I can turn this on, right? Now this is on, I can turn it off for this uh, listing right here. Yes, I'm gonna turn it off. And there we go. So it's that simple to turn on or off a listing. And obviously, once you're doing this for the first time, Etsy may walk you through the process and prompt you. It might look slightly different, but it's essentially the exact same thing and very, very simple. So you set your budget, you selected your listings to begin advertising. What you wanna do is let these ads run for the next seven days. And after seven days, I'm gonna show you the next step that most sellers don't even know about and aren't doing. So let's just say that it has been seven days at least since running our first ads, that what you wanna make sure you do is once every week, so the same day every week, go into your shop, click on marketing, click on Etsy ads, make sure you click on manage advertise listings, and it'll take us again back here. What I like to do is organize this column by spend in descending order, so from highest to low. And then what you wanna do is, if you see over here on the left-hand side, we have something called search terms where Etsy actually shows you the terms that shoppers are actually 
typing into Etsy to see your ad in your listing. So what you want to do is for each listing that you're advertising, and you can see here on the far right, we have um, if it's on or off. So we see right now in this test account, we have two um, ads that are running and the rest are not. So we only want to focus on the ads that are running. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to go through one example because that'll be plenty. So you'll do this uh, right here. You know, you will right click, open link in a new tab and do this for each listing that's active. And then one by one, what you're going to do is actually tell Etsy how to make your advertising more relevant, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So first we have obviously the product up here. And as we see, Etsy shows us the keywords that were searched by buyers in the last seven days. Okay. And it automatically sorts by views in descending order. And what's also cool. So right here on the far left, we have the actual search term or keyword that someone searched for to see our ad, whether they clicked or not, doesn't really matter, but this is what was searched for to see our product. Then what's really cool is Etsy shows you why. So remember, you can't target yet specific keywords with Etsy advertising. Etsy basically targets the keywords for you and also bids on those keywords for you, which is different from Google ads or Amazon ads or Pinterest ads. Um, so what's really, really important when running Etsy ads, this is super important for organic sales and then also advertising is you want to make sure that your title and your tags are extremely well optimized. And I'll give you two quick tips about that. Why do I say this? Well, as you can see, and you can test this for yourself, is look at all these keywords here on the left, okay? So here's all the keywords uh, that Etsy is showing our ad for currently. Now, why was our ad shown for these keywords? Etsy also tells you that. So for example, we have um, our title. So is this seller account. The reason that we're targeting the keyword seller account is from our title and our tags. And if we see, if we scroll down, there are certain examples, for example, um, Excel. The reason that we're targeting the word Excel with our ads is because of one of our tags. It's Etsy seller Excel. Okay. So, you know, title is blank because Etsy wasn't pulling from the title. But as you see, I've said this before, your title and your tags are the most important area of your listing by far. They're so critical to ultimately get seen and get organic sales. And also the better optimized, the better your ads are going to perform. And it's not just your title and tags. Make sure you have amazing images and description and your product is actually really great quality. You have great reviews. All that's going to play into your advertising as well. But in terms of getting seen with your ads and organically, your tags and title are so critical. So what are my tips for you? Number one, for your title, make sure that you're using all 140 characters or really as many as possible. So maybe somewhere between 130 to 140 characters for your title. I see so many Etsy sellers that have one phrase for their title. And if you just add more relevant keywords after that phrase that you already have, you will get more organic sales. It may take some time, but you will get more organic sales from increased ranking, getting seen for more keywords, and you'll get seen for more. Well, Etsy will show your ad to more keywords as well with Etsy ads. Um, so make sure you're utilizing that. Uh, make sure you do really in-depth keyword research. My strategy for titles, which I believe is the best, and I have a lot of experience. We've generated over a million dollars of our own products across Amazon, Etsy, Walmart, eBay, Shopify. Uh, so we have a lot of experience with e-commerce. And what we have found that works the best is strategically putting as many relevant individual words into your title as possible for Etsy, getting as close to that 140 character limit as possible and then kind of rearranging those words a little bit to remake some of your top phrases. So you're focusing more on getting more words in there because you have such little room with Etsy. It's just your tags and your title. So really kind of keyword stuffing, make sure it sounds, it makes sense. Uh, make sure it, um, you know, you kind of reorganize to where you can kind of recreate maybe a few phrases from your master keyword list, whole other video, but just maximize your title. That's the key takeaway here. And then tip number two with your tags, another huge thing uh, is number one, make sure you're using Etsy tags, super important to SEO. These are basically keywords that are on the back end, and you're telling Etsy, hey, these keywords are relevant um, to my product and they're gonna help kind of show you both in organic search on, this can actually help you title and tags on Etsy search and Google search and it helps with Etsy ads. So number one, you have 13 tags to use. Make sure you're using all 13 tags. With each tag, you have 20 character limit. Make sure you're using all 20 characters. So all 20 characters per tag, and you're using all 13 tags. Super key. So if you're not doing, and it's great news by the way, if you only have a short title and you're not using all your tags, this is a great sign because just doing that, you'll see your you'll see your performance improve here in, it may take some time, but in the future, you'll see this over time just by making those changes. Really powerful. And then with your tags, uh, big, another issue that I see a lot of sellers doing that you can even see Etsy's own wording on this is instead of using one word per tag, 
Use two or three words per tag, really important. This makes your tags way more focused and narrow. And by the way, when you have more words in your tag, you can show up for that phrase that you have in your tag, right, that specific, so it could be, let's say, um, Etsy bookkeeping sheet. We'll say it's 20 characters long, but Etsy bookkeeping sheet. I can show up for Etsy, for bookkeeping, for Etsy bookkeeping, right? So anyway, two or three words per tag. Get as close to that 20 character limit as possible. Make sure you have all 13 tags. Doing those two simple things, results are gonna improve immediately. So definitely do that if you haven't already. Pause the video and do that. And then once you've done that, okay, great. Then our SEO will start running a little bit more, uh, more kind of reach. And what I like to do is, with each tab that's open now, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And what we're going to do is, what was true with Etsy before, is Etsy would just show you the keyword. Like here's you know, the keyword that we use to show your ad, and that's it. It's like, okay, cool, thanks Etsy. Now, what a lot of sellers don't know, most sellers aren't doing this, because they don't know about it, is you can either keep this keyword that Etsy has as relevant, or you can tell Etsy if it's irrelevant. So what this does is you can go through this list, um, mark any keyword that's too broad or not really relevant to your product as irrelevant. And Etsy is going to improve your advertising over time and really show it more and more to the right customer and not to the wrong customer and make your advertising more profitable in the long term by being significantly more focused. And you'll see how that works here in a second. So first we start down here, we have the word Excel. All right. So there's three types of keywords, relevant, irrelevant, and then somewhere in the middle, and we'll cover all three. This is the irrelevant keyword. For each keyword here in your search terms, think about this, and you can actually do this yourself if you want, is if someone types in this keyword into Etsy, what kind of product are they looking for? And specifically, are they looking for your specific product or not? If someone types Excel into Etsy, what are they looking for? I have no idea. Something, some kind of Excel template, spreadsheet, something to do with Excel, but is, is this product, as you can see here, is an Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet. It's actually, first of all, it uses Google Sheets, so it's not Excel. Although someone typing in, you know, Etsy bookkeeping Excel could still be relevant because they would still be interested in this product. But Excel is way too broad for this type of product. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I see an irrelevant term, all you do is just click here. Thanks for sharing your feedback, exit out of that. And as you can see, basically if it's filled in, it's relevant. If it's not filled in, you're telling Etsy that this is irrelevant. I don't know why they, you know, I have uh, in my tag, Etsy seller Excel, that's one of my tags. So because of that, they just showed me for the word Excel, which is way too broad. So I don't want to get shown for that. And you may be thinking, cause I've had this question a lot is, well, Summer, if someone clicks on my ad, they must be interested in the ad. So I should just leave it on. And if someone clicks, you know, they're interested. No. So just cause someone clicks on your ad doesn't mean they're interested in your product. A few things can happen. So number one, your competitors can click on your ad, which is another video, another story. Number two is that your um, someone who's clicks on your ad could have accidentally typed up, clicked on it. Or number three is that, so for example, if this is Excel, or let's say that this is, um, you know, an Etsy Excel bookkeeping versus Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet. So someone types in, you know, an Excel, a keyword with Excel in it, clicks on my product because they typed in Excel, they saw my ad, so they thought that my product was an Excel product, not Google Sheets. So it's basically people can accidentally click, people can intentionally maliciously click, and then number three is that people can click thinking that your product was one thing, but it's really something else, okay? Especially with Etsy, there's so many different types of products like digital and physical. So we'll go through more of those examples, but um, yeah, by turning off irrelevant keywords, you're gonna make your ads more profitable, but it will take time. It usually takes around 30 to 60 days for me to really start seeing a big Im improvement, but within seven days, you'll already see an improvement because we were, you know, getting shown for this keyword, maybe even getting some bad clicks on it. And now we're no longer going to, and our budget is now going to be allocated toward better keywords. So that's number one, Excel, obviously way too broad, very irrelevant. Next, we have bookkeeping spreadsheet. For this product, you may think it's relevant. This product is not a bookkeeping spreadsheet. It's an Etsy bookkeeping spreadsheet. This is specifically designed for Etsy sellers only. So bookkeeping spreadsheet is way too broad. I only want to target Etsy sellers. So for this product, I'm going to turn off. If I was selling a bookkeeping spreadsheet, this would be very, very relevant, but it's not. So you need to really understand your product and your audience. So I turn it off. Great. Next, we have Etsy Excel. This is a great example of a gray keyword or a middle keyword. It's relevant, but not really relevant. So it's kind of in the middle. So with these type of keywords where they're more in the middle, so Etsy Excel, it's like, okay, someone typing Etsy Excel is definitely probably like an Etsy Exceller, maybe an Etsy seller, but maybe they're also just looking for Excel templates on Etsy. So it's kind of in the middle. 
So it's up to you with these keywords what to do with them. But my recommendation is if you want to be more aggressive, if you want to, you know, you're starting to test out ads, I would be a little bit more conservative and only turn off a few um, irrelevant keywords. Just anything that's irrelevant, like really turn those off. But anything that's kind of in the middle, I would leave those. Now, if you've been running ads for a while or you're just running ads like, hey, I have a low budget, I want to be as profitable as possible, that is my main goal is profitability, then anything that is remotely irrelevant, turn that off. Only, only target those keywords that are most relevant to your product. Why? Because it'll be much more profitable. So it's up to your business objectives. Again, everything goes back to the goals that you set initially. So in this case, I'm going to turn this off because this is too broad for me. It goes a little bit more toward the irrelevant end. Um, let's see, we have Excel template. Excel template, very, very broad. Um, someone typing in Excel template, there's all different kinds of Excel templates. There's no reason that it would be only Etsy sellers looking for this. So that's irrelevant. It's way too broad. Etsy seller account. Don't really know. A lot of irrelevant keywords here. By the way, I just set this up, uh, I think, exactly seven days ago. So you can kind of see right off the bat, it's a little bit broad. And by doing this, you become more and more refined. So imagine if you've set up ads in the past, you never did this. If you were doing this once per week, you should see your profitability improve. And you can see on the back end exactly why that's the case. These are all these keywords that Etsy's showing that are not relevant. Expense track, um, we're gonna make this irrelevant, which is crazy, all these are irrelevant so far because way too broad. Uh, it's just someone who wants to track their personal expenses, someone who wants to track their business expenses, someone who wants to track their Etsy expenses. We don't know who it is, it's way too broad. So I'm gonna turn that off for my business goals, it's too broad. Spreadsheet, too broad, all different kinds of spreadsheets. Sales tracker, we're gonna turn that off because there's all different kinds of um, sales tracking. It's not, if it was Etsy sales tracker, I would leave that on. That would be very, very relevant. We have Etsy seller. This is interesting. This is another gray keyword. It's in the middle, okay? So Etsy, so someone typing in Etsy seller, they're probably looking for tools or products for Etsy sellers. They're probably an Etsy seller, right? That's why they'd be searching. But it's not Etsy seller accounting, Etsy seller bookkeeping, Etsy seller tools, Etsy seller sales tracker. It's just Etsy seller. So for me, because this is newer and I'm getting started off, I'm gonna leave this as is. But if I look back and my ads aren't very profitable, like I said before, and I really wanna focus on profitability, like if my ads are kind of right on the edge of being profitable or unprofitable, or certain months they're profitable, certain months they're unprofitable, they're right on the edge, then I'd be much more aggressive. Be, okay, turn that off, turn that off. Only the most relevant keywords are what we're gonna leave on. So um, Etsy seller, we're gonna leave on. Um, seller account, a little bit broad, I will, and what I can do here actually is change this from views and I can actually look at high order rate. So I want to see if anyone actually purchased with this. And sometimes Etsy actually show you here on the far right hand side and there's no uh, evidence to indicate that. So what I'm going to do is search back to views because basically the reason for clicking on um, high order rate is I want to see if someone actually purchased after being in seller account, then maybe I would leave it on but it's way too broad. I'm gonna go back to views just to show you, which is usually what I like to leave because the views will show you kind of the most keywords. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Seller account, Amazon seller account, Etsy seller account, what are they looking for? So very, very broad. And you can see right off the bat, it takes some time for Etsy to really understand your listing. The more sales data that you get for your listing, the more accurate your keywords are gonna become. So keep that in mind. When you're just getting started off, it's gonna be very broad. You need to be kind of a little bit more aggressive with kind of turning some of these off. Um, and it will take time. Keep that in mind. That's why I recommend personally, we run Etsy ads for 30 to 60 days before we really focusing on, on getting them really profitable. The first 30 days, they can be fairly unprofitable, but after that time period between 30 to 60, we get them more break even, and then 60 days on, we want them to be profitable, if that makes sense. So it's kind of 30, 30, and then the rest of that time period um, is you know focusing on profitability, and that's our personal strategy. But again, it depends on your business goals. So we're just gonna leave this as is, and even though I turned off all of these others, pretty much all of the uh, keywords as of now, Etsy will show me for other keywords as well, or they should. So you can kind of come in and again, you can always change your decisions. You can come back in, in the next seven days and update, um, but I'm gonna leave this as is for now. And again, once we go back to our dashboard, you wanna do this for all products. So maybe I would go here and, and go ahead and do this. But for the sake of time, um, we're just gonna stick with this one product for now, but hopefully that makes sense. So do this every seven days. And also every seven days, what we wanna make sure we do is go over here to the clicks column now and organize in descending order from highest to low. Under filters, make sure you choose at least the last 30 days to 60 days. That's the kind of the date range. 
Um, and if you are in between one or the other, I would choose 60 days because that has a little bit more data. And you may be thinking, well, Summer, I've only been running for seven days or 14 days or 21 days. Still, just select that as a date range. It'll just you know capture everything within that 30-day period, even if you've not been running ads for 30 days yet. So um, I'm just going to select 30 days. If you're going to select 60, go to custom, and then you'll do it that way. Um, and the reason for that is with optimizing ads, you want to look at your past data and use that past data to make future decisions. Because your past data, in this case, is the best data that you have to make decisions for each listing, um, which I'll show you here in a second. And the key though is if you look way too far in the past, things change you know, with seasons or with time. So something that used to be profitable could now be unprofitable. Things that used to be unprofitable could now be profitable for a variety of different things. More competitors or less competitors, you know, um, peak seasonality, much higher demand on Etsy, people actually going in and buying. Um, and so on, right? So things are always changing. So you want to look back at a good amount of time frame, but not too far back because then it's too far in the past. Things have changed, but then too soon is not enough data. So it's kind of that sweet spot. And I found between 30 to 60 days is a very, very good time frame. Usually 30, 45, or 60. And if you want to get way in the weeds, you could A-B test and for a certain period, optimize on a 30-day look back. For another period, look at 45 days. And then for another period, 60, and then find uh, where your profitability is best. But keep it simple, 30 or 60 days. Um, I like to do 60 days to have more data. Uh, but if you're just getting started, just choose 30, hit done. There we go, good to go. We've organized by clicks. And what you wanna specifically look out for, it's very, very simple, is the average Etsy listing conversion rate is around one to 3%, right, on average. And this definitely depends. And your goal is to get your conversion rate through your images, your description, and your actual product quality up as high as possible. Super important. If you improve your images, right, uh, and your Etsy description, your conversion rate automatically go up, your ads all of a sudden will now become more profitable. The most important thing to do to improve your advertising um, is your actual images and your listing. That's a whole other story. So, okay, aside from that, which we'll talk about in a second, um, on average, it's your listing conversion rate is gonna be between one to 3%. That means you need anywhere from 34 to 100 or more clicks to have solid data, right? Because 1% of 100 is one sale. Okay, or 1% of, or sorry, 3% of 100 is, you know, three sales. So you need anywhere from 34 clicks to 100 clicks to have some solid data, whether to know to turn off or on a listing or not. So I'll show you here in a second. So basically what you're gonna do is go through, you can start here at the top and just quickly look through. So if you only have two um, products that you're advertising, then only look at these two. Super simple, really, really quick, by the way. You're gonna look through and see if there's, are there any listings that have at least 34 clicks to 100 clicks, but have zero sales, zero orders here. So what you're looking for is anywhere from 34 to 100 here in the clicks, but there are zero orders. If that happens, what you're gonna do is turn, turn it off, okay? So let's pretend it was this one. Let's pretend that this product right here had 100, sorry, right here, 100 clicks and zero orders. What would I do? So let's say I'm currently running it. That means that 100 people clicked, or our, our ad was clicked 100 times, but not a single sale. We know the conversion rate on average is 1%. That means our ads are not converting. And they're actually probably hurting our Etsy conversion rate, and we're wasting money. We're spending money on clicks that aren't turning into sales. So what we want to make sure that we do is turn off that um, listing, because we're just going to keep wasting money. Even if we might make a sale in the future, it's, gonna, it's not going to be profitable. It's going to be very, very unprofitable. So this is called kind of like non-converting. So this is the non-converting criteria. Anything that's getting clicks, but it's not converting into sales, we want to turn off that listing. But we want to make sure we give it enough time. So what I recommend doing is if you have a brand new product on Etsy, let it get at least 100 clicks with your ads before turning it off. Okay, really important. Why? Because when you're getting started, when you have less reviews, right? Less people, your conversion rate is going to be lower. Less people are going to buy. And by the way, conversion rate is just like of the people that went to your listing, how many of them bought? What percentage of them actually purchased? The, the more percentage that purchased, that means more sales. The fewer is worse. So the bigger your conversion rate, the better, the, the higher the percentage. So when you're just starting off, you have, you know, no reviews, uh, you're, you know, brand new with keyword ranking and everything. So because of that, um, you definitely want to give your, adds enough ample time. And I see a lot of Etsy sellers just turning off. They're like, oh, I, you know, it's, there's 30 clicks and no sales. I'm going to turn it off. No, that's not enough data. So, and also for perspective, the average Etsy cost per click, and this definitely does depend on um, product and category is around 20 cents to 50 cents. So on average, you'll spend 20 to $50 
to test your product and hopefully make that money back, right? That's the goal. But with certain listings, you'll spend 20 to $50 or potentially even more or even less to kind of test it to see is this converting or not, okay? So that's my recommendation. That's what I personally do, but it's your business, totally up to you. So anything with 100 clicks but zero orders, turn it off, okay? Everything else that has clicks but some kind of orders, leave it. Is What we're looking for is zero orders with 100 clicks or more, okay? That's what we're looking for. We're gonna turn it off uh, in the past 30 to 60 days. So it's really quick. At first, it seems a little bit complicated. It seems like there's all these things, but number one, you're looking at your search terms. Number two, you're looking at high clicks but zero sales. And then number three of what you're going to do is with the clicks column still organized in descending order, what you wanna do is look at your clicks to ROAS, okay? So your ROAS column here stands for return on advertising spend. So the higher your return or your ROAS, the better, right? The more profitable your advertising. The lower the number, uh, not as profitable, not as good. So the bigger the number is better in what we're looking for. And a question I get all the time is, Sumner, what is the best ROAS for Etsy ads? Their answer is it completely depends on your product but I'm gonna give you a free tool to show you um, how to easily calculate this for your own products, okay? So remember that cost per acquisition number that I mentioned before? So it's sort of like this, just kind of another representation of it. So the first thing you wanna do, and by the way, you should do this before you sell anything on Etsy. You should know your profit before you start selling on Etsy. And yeah, things can change over time. Maybe you decrease price a little bit or increase, but you should know before you go on, at least with a very, very good idea. So this tool is the Etsy profit calculator tool, both for products and as you can see on sort of a monthly basis for the year. This is 100% free for you. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description section below along with everything else for you to access. And basically with this tool, what you'll do is just fill out the steps here. So first, enter in your product price. Let's say it's $40. Uh, any kind of production costs, and you can kind of hover over and see uh, some different little info here. So how much does it cost to produce each unit? packaging costs, shipping costs, um, any Etsy fees you know, per product. Again, this is just sample data, so don't take this literally. Marketing and advertising, we're gonna leave that blank for now for what we're doing, but later you should account for anywhere from 10 to 15%, sometimes even more for marketing and advertising. Um, other fees, right, we're just gonna leave that zero for now, but just fill this out. And then once you fill out these first sections here, you're gonna automatically get uh, a profit number, right, in dollar amount. So for every $40 uh, you know, that we make in revenue, we actually make $26.50 in actual profit. Again, excluding ads, as you see right here, because we left it blank. And then our profit margin before advertising is 66.25%, okay? So all you're gonna do is quickly fill out this tool for each of the products that you're advertising, very simple. And then what you're going to do is just go to a calculator and take that number here, okay, and it's gonna be divided by one. So it's one divided by this number, again, in percentage. So for example, so this is 66.25%. So what we do here, and I'll just show you again, uh, if I can. One divided by 66.25%, that's the key. Hit enter. This is now our target ROAS. We want a ROAS at or above this number, because remember, that basically this, you know, basically this is sort of the number that we get um, back. So if we spend one point, if our ROAS is 1.5, basically, we made zero profit. If it's above 1.5, we made a little bit of profit. If it's way above 1.5, we made a lot of profit, right? So the further above 1.5 our ROAS, even better. The, if it's lower than this number, it means we're unprofitable, basically. It's another representation of cost per acquisition, profit margin. They're different sort of ways of displaying the same type of information. Basically, displaying profitability, if that makes sense. But to keep it simple, like I said, just run through the calculator. Whatever number is here, one divided by this number, that will give you a good general target ROAS for your product. So in this case, with us, these two products, literally right here, our target ROAS is 1.2, okay? So you need to know your target ROAS for each product, very, very important. And then once you know that, then what you'll do, like I said, is look at clicks. So any product with 34 to 100 clicks and a ROAS that's below your target for the past 30 to 60 days, right up here, then what you wanna do is turn it off. So in this case, my target ROAS for this product that you're looking at right here is 1.2. 1.6 is above, so is that good or bad? Right, it's a little quiz, it's good. So I'm gonna leave it on, that's great. It's above my target, so that's awesome. I'm profitable on this, especially because these are digital products. Next, we have um, this product also 1.2, 
Our ROAS is 4.55 currently, which is great. The higher, the better. So that's amazing. So I'm going to leave these running. If let's say this product, let's say it has hundred clicks and the ROAS is one and my target is, let's say it's, uh, you know, three. Well, that's really bad. So I want to make sure I turn that off because it's unprofitable. So also with this, another little hack or another little step that I like, it's getting a little bit more advanced. It's just my personal strategy with our own products. On Etsy, when we're launching, we have found that by running Etsy ads, we can actually increase keyword ranking right off the bat. It helps us get reviews and everything. So we run right off the bat, even though it's not as profitable if we were to wait, you know, 30 days, 60 days to start running ads. We write ads right away. So for us, our criteria to not make it too confusing is for the first 30 days of launching a brand new product on Etsy, that first 30 day period, our ROAS is 2X. So it's two times our target. So again, let's say our ROAS here, it's 1.2 now that this product has been launched. During our launch period, it's 2.4. So your ROAS times two. And why do I do that? Because I wanna be really aggressive in the beginning. I don't have any reviews, it's a brand new product. Etsy's still learning and understanding what the product is to show me. So I wanna be aggressive and rank as quickly as possible, get as many reviews as possible. So I'm willing to be unprofitable for the first 30 days because I'm thinking about the long term instead of trying to be profitable from day one, which is a big mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make. And 30 days is not a long time frame. But of course, it depends on your goals and if you don't have the money to support that, probably shouldn't be doing that and that's a whole other discussion. So for the first 30 days, 2X my ROAS. So for this example, it would be 2.4. For the next 30 days, then I reduce that to 1.5 times the ROAS, right? So it would just be um, 1.2 times 1.5. That would be my ROAS for the next 30, sort of a transitionary period. It's still aggressive, but we're starting to become less aggressive. Now, hopefully we have some more reviews. Etsy understands our product a little bit better. So we don't need to be as aggressive, but we're kind of transitioning to becoming profitable instead of just being abrupt and you know, going right, uh, right away. Then, so that's first 30 day period, that's phase one. Next 30 day period, that's phase two. And then the remaining period kind of on, we set our ROAS to break even. So then it becomes 1.2. So it goes from, it starts for the first 30 days at 2.4 target ROAS. Then it ends at 1.2 um, ultimately after that period. That's what we do personally. That's our strategy behind it. Um, again, it's your business. Do whatever you like with it. Um, just want to give that a little additional detail. So those are the three things. Make sure you look at your search terms. Turn off irrelevant search terms. It'll become more profitable. Getting more reviews. That's going to make your listing more profitable organic, naturally. Um, you know, making sure you're turning off any listings that have at least 100 clicks with no sales. And also turning off any listings that have at least 100 clicks when you're starting off with um, a low ROAS, you know, below your target. And one final tip that will have the biggest impact on your advertising performance are the following. So everything we've covered up to this point will help you, you know, structure your advertising correctly and absolutely improve your performance over time. But remember, crap in means crap out. If you don't have a very good listing, product or value proposition, don't expect very good results with Etsy ads. Actually, you won't get great results. If you have an amazing product and an amazing listing that actually accurately displays and shows how amazing that product is, then you can expect amazing results with your Etsy ads. And what does that mean specifically? So like we already covered, make sure that your title is fully keyword optimized, maximizing your character limit. Same thing with your tags, your images. This is one of the biggest areas that I find Etsy sellers are failing. These need to be high quality, professional, look like they belong in a magazine, a mix of lifestyle images, infographics, and product images, which obviously will vary depending on the product type, like a digital product that you see here, but do not skimp out on your product images. This is the single place that you can seriously increase your profitability. Your Etsy description needs to be full, contain every single piece of information that is important to the customer before they're ready to hit that buy button. Does your description make people laugh out loud? Does it make them cry? Does it make them desire your product like nothing else, right? Does it have this ridiculously strong emotional connection with your customer to get them to buy immediately, right? And if I went through anything here and you're kind of on the edge of like, I don't really know Sumner, maybe not. I feel like I might be missing out a little bit. Then be sure to comment on this video for a chance to win free lifetime access to our top rated Etsy shop mastery course that will literally walk you through how to optimize your listing, how to choose high demand, low competition products that nobody knows about, and a ton of other hacks that nobody else talks about. And a link to that will be in the description section below as well. If you do want to go ahead and purchase 
and you end up winning our contest, you'll get your full purchase refunded in case you don't want to wait. But again, uh, get all the free tools and templates there in the description section. Be sure to check out our free and really amazing Etsy seller Facebook community. Uh, we have the course down in the description. Everything's down there. And I really hope you found this video valuable and hope this helps take your Etsy business to heights you never thought were possible. And if you did like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment as well with any questions that you have. And we'll do our best to get back to as many questions as possible. And consider hitting that red subscribe button on your screen if you'd like to see more in-depth, actually valuable e-commerce tutorials to generate real profit online. So with all this being said, thank you so much for watching and your support. God bless and look forward to having you in future videos.